The cause of your chronic liver disease could be dysbiosis and the resultant gut liver axis dysfunction. If it is, your medical doctor is never going to find that and your chronic liver disease is going to get worse. But a functional medicine practitioner could correct the dysbiosis and halt the harm to your liver from the gut liver axis dysfunction. Let's figure out how to do that today. I'm Dr. John Bartimus, and I'm putting the pieces together to help you live a life at Optimal. Chronic liver disease is a big problem in the United States with non-alcoholic fatty liver disease affecting up to 25% of the U.S. population as a whole. That's 25% of 330 million people. 75% of people suffering from chronic liver disease are suffering from non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. That's fatty liver disease not caused by alcohol. People at highest risk of non-alcoholic fatty liver disease are those who are overweight and, and or obese and or those who have blood sugar regulation issues. Non-alcoholic fatty liver disease has no symptoms until it's too late. So you could be walking around with it and not know until there's so much liver scarring that you need a liver biopsy or a liver transplant. There are, is not currently any FDA approved medical treatment for non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. So your hopes for halting damage and or reversing it lies in the area of lifestyle, nutrition, and functional medicine. As with all chronic diseases, functional medicine can shine with non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. Now, on September 23rd, 2019, I put out a functional nugget, number 436, on the gut liver axis and non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. And in that video, I discussed research from 2019 that had just found that the, the potential pathogen or the dysbiotic microbe Klebsiella pneumoniae was shown in humans to cause autobrewery syndrome or alcohol production that damaged the liver. Well, Klebsiella pneumoniae lives in the gut. So this, this validated a gut liver axis mechanism of non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. Now, if we drew it out, we could say the people had dysbiosis or overgrowth of bad bacteria in the gut, in that study, specifically Klebsiella pneumoniae. That dysbiosis could be associated with or causal or cause leaky gut. When there's leaky gut present, you're having increased exposure in the GI tract of microbes from the outside world, of toxins from the outside world. Well, how do those get to the liver? The gut-liver axis is formed via the portal vein, which is the vein that carries the blood from the GI tract to the liver. The majority of the blood in your GI tract travels in the portal vein to the liver before the rest of the body gets what's in the gut whether that's the food you ate, or the microbes you ate or entered you, or any toxins you're exposed to. So it's the liver's responsibility to clear those toxins or those microbes so that they don't go to the rest of your body. Well, if you have dysbiosis, leaky gut, you're being exposed to toxins and microbes potentially at a level that the liver can't handle, so some then make the systemic circulation and can lead to issues that way. So, through leaky gut, those things enter the portal circulation via the portal vein, and then you have liver inflammation. And liver inflammation is left long term leads to liver damage, liver scarring, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. The mechanism was covered in that last video I referenced that I made in September 2019. Check it out. So this has been established and covered in previous videos. Research now is showing that there are probiotic strains that can help halt the non-alcoholic fatty liver disease progression and halt the harm of NAFLD. So what are those strains? 
Those strains I will list at the end of the video. There's seven of them. They're long scientific names that most of you don't want to hear, but you can see them listed and then search them for yourself. But there's been two studies recently looking at these strains. Study one looked at people who are overweight or obese with diagnosed non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. And what they did was they took this combination of seven probiotic strains and a mix of prebiotics, which is the food that your probiotics eat, and they gave it to half that group for 28 weeks. At the start of the study, all of the people in the study had lab-high liver enzymes. So lab-high ALT and AST. Liver enzymes are high when there's damage to the liver. When liver cells are damaged, they spill these enzymes so we can see in the blood that your liver is inflamed. These patients also had high fibrosis scores, meaning that liver damage was occurring at the level that fibrosis or fibrotic tissue, scar tissue was being laid down, damaging their liver. And associated with all of that, they had lab high C-reactive protein, which is conventional medicine's favorite inflammatory marker. So these people had inflamed livers that were scarring and dumping liver enzymes showing that the tissue was being damaged. So what happened? Well, uh, along with healthy recommendations of physical activity and nutrition, these people were given the mixture of the seven probiotic strains with the prebiotics called a symbiotic synergy between prebiotics and probiotics. They were given this product for 28 weeks and at the end of the 28 weeks, these people that were diagnosed with non-alcoholic fatty liver disease and were all overweight and obese with lab high liver enzymes, fibrosis scores, and CRP were studied for the effects. The group that received the, pro the symbiotic, they all had their liver enzymes reduced to normal range. They had their fibrosis scores reduced to normal range and their C-reactive protein or their total inflammatory level reduced by 54% or over half. Say wow, because there is no FDA approved treatment for non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. So if we can take a probiotic mixture and give it to these people for 28 weeks in addition to the nutrition and exercise recommendations that they should already be doing, right? Lifestyle recommendations, then we can totally take a a blood panel that shows liver inflammation and liver disease and turn it to normal pr fairly quickly and non-invasively with no side effects. That's big time. There was a second study that took people with non-alcoholic non fatty liver disease diagnosis and none of them were overweight or obese. So seemingly healthy appearing people. Same idea, these people had high liver enzymes, they had fibrosis scores that were high, and they had high CRP or liver inflammation. At the end of the study, compared to the placebo group, the group that got the probiotic mixture, the symbiotics, they had normalized liver enzymes, they had normalized fibrosis scores, and their C-reactive protein had decreased by 46%. So again, by almost half. So if you have chronic liver disease, and your doctor hasn't considered a gut liver axis mechanism to your chronic liver disease and you're not being treated because there's not a treatment for non-alcoholic fatty liver disease then this probiotic mixture is something you need to investigate seek out and you should consider that in addition to a whole functional medicine plan that a detective clinician puts together for you individualized and specific for you so that you can most quickly halt that damage to your liver and reverse any other comorbidities that are going on so that you can live a life at optimal.